Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and happy new year. We haven't met in a year, so I wish everybody that. Um, everybody is in attendance, at least I see. Um, do we have a motion for approval of the June 29th, 21 meeting minutes? Hello, they disappear. I can't motion because I wasn't there, Steve. Yeah, so somebody else. We'll say I was Jason, Jason might have been there. Donnie might have been there. Jason, Don, Lori, Britt were there. Yeah, I'll make a motion we approve the meeting at minutes. Thank you, Don. Yep. A second. I second the motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Any public comments? I guess nobody's on. Um, so I'll go to Bob. Any comments or updates for you? I know we Both. spoke time ago after elections on on committee stuff so i gave you a chance to give anybody an update yeah so um i can tell you what we've done down at billings since um last time we spoke so you know the speed bumps we got a i, I think Britt sent an email to me and as far as what was going to happen we have the speed bumps back in unfortunately we didn't have the double face tape in at the time so we we pegged them down so and decided to rip them up and throw them onto the side of the road, which we retrieved. I think the double face tape is now in. So they're gonna be reinstalled with the double face tape and the in the pegs. Uh, as far as uh, that was the, the speeding part, we met myself and Donnie and Alan was sitting behind me, met with a uh, representative from um, Deep. Her name is Yolanda Cooley. We met there at nine o'clock Monday morning to discuss moving some additional rocks that the town will provide from our transfer station to line up on some areas where people parked that are outside the parking places that were, as you know, the boat launch was redesigned by deep. Um, so that's gonna happen shortly. Uh, we also have had during the Memorial Day weekend, we had a deep representative parked there, uh, both on Sunday and Monday. Um, when Yolanda, Yolanda was there yesterday, we noticed the sign that said closed on the, on the walking path, the Billings Lake Trail or whatever it, Bill Ricker calls it. Um, so they recommended that we take the sign down because there is one parking place for, for someone that wants to hike the trail. Um, according to the people that are uh, the state, that uh, when they put a boat launch in, there's three ways you can use a boat launch. You can use it to boat, you can use it to fish, and you can use it to view nature. They feel that hiking is part of viewing nature. So they didn't think that the town shutting that trail down made sense. So. Bill Ricker has since gone over and taken that sign off the um, off the trail, so now the trail is open again, and um, and that's about where we are on that. The rocks, Bob. Yeah, I told him about the rocks. Oh, okay. Yep. So, so that's where we are on Billings. Uh, if anybody wants to comment on that before we move on to something else, that's fine. Hi, this is Brett. Sorry, sorry, I was late, having some audio problems. So yes, I actually live on Billings. Lake Road. Um, and I actually saw um, one of them coming to address the speed bumps just the other day, but the one in the middle, what's the estimation for that to come in? The one that's missing on the hill? I'll let Don Hill sitting behind me just answer that. So we have that one that we found last week. Yep. Someone threw it out at the bottom of the hill into the water. So we got it back and um, just waiting to get some time to free some guys up to get up there and do it. Okay. The problem with those are right, is that these people start to burn out on the top of the speed humps. If you look at them, they're, they've almost burned right through one of them and they're destroying them. And that there's the, no matter how much tape I put down or bolts I put in it, they're going to be tore up if they keep burning out on them. Yeah, the one closest to my house, the one at the top is is the one that seems to pop up and have have some marks on it. But I know that the other day when um they were cutting the cutting along the side of the road that tractor that didn't like going over that but um what about the electronic sign that used to flash your speed as you're going down okay so we have 
We have two signs right now in the village uh, that will okay. be there for probably another maybe 30 days. Then they advise we only leave them there for a short time, no more than two or three months. Because okay. they said they have they have records showing that when you put a speed sign in, the speed does drop for a while. But then after a while, it becomes just people start ignoring it and it starts going back up the other way. So they felt a two to three month window was more than more than enough to have a speed sign in one location. Okay. The nice thing about the two speed signs we have in the village is they um they don't exceed a certain mile an hour total. So you can't drive by and have someone go by at 65 and someone else in the guy take a picture and just say, hey, look how fast we got this up, or you know, high, how high a number. They shut off at 45 uh, or 40. So the um the nice thing with that is so there's no there's no reason to try to go by at 65 and take a picture because it'll just be blank. Um yeah. they did that on purpose because the one we have on Wyasa Road uh, up near the fairground. That seem, that doesn't shut off, and that seemed to be an issue with people trying to see how fast they could go by that and make the number rise. So, um, we could put a speed if you think it'll help. We could put a speed sign back on Billings Lake um, if you think that it makes sense. If you think it's not going to make people want to go faster, we can try it again. But, yeah, I know. I, I do go back and forth on that because yes, they try to beat their top score, you know, <laughs> going past it. But um, it's just. I don't know what else to do to control this the speed because I know several on several occasions our neighbors have been run off the road walking and it, this has been an ongoing problem and it's always a problem in the summer once it gets nice and so I just don't know I know resources are tight but it's like can, we need continuous monitoring we don't need monitoring at nine o'clock in the morning those are just fishermen who are pretty respectable it's typically at three o'clock and later now, I've actually heard that some of the local up there, some of the neighbors up there, uh, also, uh, one, I won't say who, but one of the people that live on your road contacted me to tell me that one of her neighbors, she thought was one of the key speeders up and down that road. There is, and that, he is one of them, and he actually intentionally tried to, to run me over, and I did call the police on that one because um, he's very aggressive, so yes. Oh, the um, have you filed a complaint? Uh, I mean, I filed the complaint when it happened, um, when he did that, and my other neighbor was witness because I was waiting for my son to get off of the bus, and I was trying to approach him to to tell him to to slow down, and he aimed his car at me until I jumped out of the way. The um, also there was an individual that said they thought someone, the person removing the speed bumps, might have been a local rather than. Because um, I imagine the fishermen, as you say, they're respectful. They come early in the morning and they leave, and they're not driving fast anyway. If they got a trailer, I'm assuming. Um, but if it's a local who just gets tired of going over those bumps every day, could that be? Yeah, I don't foresee the the one that's the speeder on our road actually doing that. I mean, he he just flies over them. They don't. He does. Those don't even face him. I don't think he would actually make the effort to remove them. It's that's too much work. I think it's I think it's just kids or teenagers or you know well the burnout I assume is a teen is not one of the neighbors is the um the per speeding person you're talking about drive a vehicle a truck or a car they have two vehicles one is a Dodge truck I think and then the other one is like a um Ford uh it's an SUV the Ford all right. So not yeah. a Ford Explorer, but Ford Edge. Ford Edge. It's gray. Do you find that there's a particular time when there's the, the majority of people that are speeding between certain hours of the day? Yeah. So it's usually so he and he'll so the neighbor will speed on 201. He'll pass school buses. I was behind him one day. So he it's whenever he goes to pick up his school to his kids from school from Wheeler. But um it's usually I tell my eight-year-old that, you know, once like school gets out like two o'clock or now it's going to be different because of summer, he's not allowed to be down near the road. So I would say two o'clock on it's fair game. Um, you, but there's more speed than just this one person. So you have, Oh, well, it's, it's kids. It's people drinking. Um, my, my, one of my other neighbors was followed with a car tailgating and throwing beer cans out the window and calling her names and that was like a 
she got a she got the license plate. Did she file a complaint, file a complaint with, the, with the police? I don't know if she actually did. All right, so we have two issues there. We have a speeding issue, which actually is the traffic issue. And this is the traffic committee. The second issue is with the swimming in the trash, but that's really not Correct. traffic committee. Correct. And we are working on that on the um, with DEP, and we're trying to mitigate that the best we can. But um, all right, anything else on speeding on buildings? Like we could look about putting a speed sign back up to if you think that makes sense. No, I mean it's it's fine to not to, to not have it. I don't know if if why there's not a speed bump past the top. Like the why there's the th I know that they're strategically placed for for specific reasons, but you know, due to corners or whatever. So I don't know if once you go past my house, which is 54, you go down the hill and that's when it comes really windy, but there's none past that. Oh, how did you, Donnie? When so you, this so speed yeah. bumps are determined by several factors, um, drainage, uh, catch basins, oh. uh, downgrades, upgrades, and then straightaways. You can't really put a speed hump on a corner. Right. It's flying and they hit that speed hump and they go off into the woods. There is liability and there are case law, um, you know, I'm a retired police officer. There, there are case law where people hit speed bumps and either got hurt or killed and they turned around and sued the town. Okay. On, on, on something like that because we install them. Okay. So that's why we pick the areas that we pick and um, we're placed, we're placed there. Yeah. Cause if you, once you pass my house, it, it's too windy and too windy and curvy. Yeah. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, you want to move on to something other than Billings Lake, Steve? Or I can't. You're on mute, I think, Steve. Thank you. How's the Memorial Day weekend up there? Uh, I went up on sun on Monday, and it was seemed pretty calm. But that was also mid afternoon. I think um, one of the people spoke to me about a lot of the action takes place after the boaters leave. So if the boaters get there early and they fish. In boat, then they leave at 3, 3.34. That's when it tends that uh, more of the young people show up after that. Um, the deep representative was there from, I think, 8 in the morning until about 4 in the afternoon and left. So if that's when, if that's the issue after a particular time, uh, and I don't know that because I don't live there and I don't, I'm not, I don't frequent that area. So, yeah, it's definitely the evening. You know, there's there's a there was a car that dropped off a bunch of kids, car full of kids. I mean, the kids the kids were respectful because, you know, we get neighbors down there that see everything that goes on. Sometimes we just you know, the kids swimming and 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 having fun is fine. It's just when they start drinking and they start littering and they start speeding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... So one one thing I want to just make everybody clear on is that those speed uh, or temporary ones we put in there, they are, they're never intended to be put on a road. Those are always intended for a parking lot. Parking lot, yeah. Correct. So every time that somebody runs over those, we, we drilled new holes every, uh, last year for them and they still pull out because of them burning out on them and all this other stuff. The tape did seem to help a little bit. But if they keep burning out on them, they're going to loosen up and just, you know, let us know. And we'll go up there and try to pound those uh, heads back down on those things. Or if they're burning out, maybe they'll we'll be lucky enough. They'll catch one of those those bolts and rip the tire apart. Didn't, uh, <laughs> yeah. didn't I hear that um, one of the neighbors up there was going to put a deer cam out there on one of the humps? Yeah, I don't know if he actually put it out there um, or moved his trail cam. Because if we do find someone is trying to rip up the speed hump um, and throw it aside, uh, I would be more than happy to send a policeman up there to arrest them for destroying town property. Those are four hundred eighty dollars a piece for those things. Yeah, I mean we have a trail cam at the end of our driveway. I mean we can certainly move ours to one of those too. Um, I would like to have some evidence that you know, especially if it's the same person doing it each time. All right. Um, Steve, what else do you want to talk about? Do you want, you want me to talk about anything else? That There was some things that came up with me. Um, I had a call from 
somebody that wanted to, to sign on Button Road, there's a sign that says 35 miles an hour right on a bend. And they said if you they went 35 miles an hour, they would cross over into the other lane and possibly go into the woods. So they wanted that that sign dropped down from 35 to 25. I had someone call me about they wanted to have some deer crossing signs or beware of deer over there where Bill Peterson's house is near the um, the fairgrounds. But then again, we have deer all over the town. I mean, it's yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, um, and I, and, in, and there are some people that when we put up too many signs, uh, we have people come in and they'll get mad at Donnie or the town because they say that the sign pollution, right? We have too many signs up. So uh, I guess we're kind of between a rock and a hard place when it comes to signage, you know, you, is there too few, too many, where do they go and so on. So any thoughts at the, at the speed uh, that traffic committee would have on about that sign on button, maybe you would want to go look at it and or deer signs over near Bill Peterson's house. And it wasn't Bill that called, it was, it was a neighbor from that area that said that a lot of deer seem to be hit there. So I haven't seen any evidence of a deer being hit there, but I can show you there over the state, over the town rather, that have been hit on 201, Casada Kill Road, and everywhere else in town. So, and I see tons on Babcock Road when I'm driving down there. So, I got, I, I have three wildlife crossing signs by me. And I, again, they're up. I understand somebody probably asked for them, but it, it, I put them everywhere on every road, every 10 feet, because I see suck on the road all the time. So, I'm not a sign person. If you, you know, if you don't know, that's not going to be wildlife possibly on the road. Stay home. And we can get caution to train <laughs> to always cross where there is a sign. That would be easier for us. Yeah. But then they move down the road. So, okay. Steve, Steve, I can tell you, we haven't picked up a deer yet this year. Steve, yeah. Steve. Yeah. I've seen we have it. We have it in town. Yeah. Have, matter of fact, I got my first call today up yeah. on Rocky uh, Follow. Follow Road. Yeah. There's one on Casadic. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's a state. That's issue. a state. Oh, I, right, that that's, is state. And I, don't know if that's, I think that's gone now. We call the one I follow. Uh, thirty-two. Supposedly in the yard. We're gonna go get it after. I was say I didn't. I didn't see it. Thirty. Thirty. Follow. Sorry. Don't. Yeah, thirty. Follow. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. No, I don't think I just remind the committee and as well as I, I think the the speed limit is yours. I mean, we're, we're not going to be the engineers to say what speed should be um, unless, unless you want us to. Uh, I think we're more of, like, like you know, we talked about it before, we recommend to you, the selectmen, what we think they should do and then use you, um, the selectmen take action. So we're really not any board that had any, any authority to do anything except meet. Um, actually, actually, you do. Um, you do control the. You can change speed limits based on the uh, the board themselves. Um, as far as the, that's why we have the traffic commission. So the first selectman is not making those decisions. The board is making the decisions. Um, I started the one in Griswold when I was selectman up there to do the same thing. The selectman doesn't make the decision. It comes from the board to, to tell the selectman this is what we suggest you should do for speed limits and signs. Well, we, we were told in the, when we were incorporated or put together that we were advisory only to the selectmen and selectmen make the decision. So if that's changed, we need to know that so we can we can do what we need to do. But we Correct. were told in, in every action we take in Solvar is we recommend to selectmen they do this and then it goes to selectmen's meeting, they do it or not. And we never heard back yeah, previously. No. If it so I would, I would prefer I that. I talked about that, so. I would prefer that, Steve, that you act as an advisory, come to the selectmen with a recommendation, and then we would decide if that's, we do that with other advisory committees, we decide whether that's the way to go or not, but at least we've got input from the traffic commission, because we may disagree with you. Um, right. So. And I think because we're called the subcommittee instead of committee, that may be part of it as well. Okay. So, so we'll, we'll keep the advisory in, in us. Um, I think but the I only think other thing that we that's still open. The major thing that's still open is the um, speed humps in town. Uh, why do you say it's still open? It's not open. Well, it's, what? it's closed. All right. The, the, the previous, the previous administration voted and approved speed humps in the village. Yeah. I, I know the uh, after that fact, after they were already approved, Mike formed the traffic commission, who then advised they preferred not to have the speed humps in the village. Uh, that's not what we said. Uh, excuse me. 
That's not what we said. We said oh. we want to know statistics on speed, how people out of all the people. So we asked for specific questions to be, to be answered. We never said no speed homes. So that's not what I heard. But so, so where we are now, and the, the Board of Selectmen spoke about this last night, there was a plan originally put eight speed humps in the village. This goes back three years ago. Um, two mm -hmm. winters they were put off in a row. Uh, now we're in the summer. We have time to do it. We have an RFP out right now to get pricing on speed humps. We, we decided to put in only half the speed humps at this point to see how they work. Put them on two of them on upper main and two on lower main. So from Red Onion all the way up to Route 2 where Chucky's is. Uh, two on each side of the bridge. So there'll be, um, there's orange stakes that are in the ground now on where would they be, where they're proposed to go. I uh, met with Donnie, we went out and, because as Don just said, there's, there's places you can't put them. You can't put them in front of driveways. You can't put them in front of tie-ins to, to gas, to water and so on. We, we can't, we don't want water pooling. So because of that, like they can't go on corners. So we had to find strategic locations. I try not to put them near anyone's bedroom window because you're going to hear the, the thump when the car goes over it. Uh, so there's four, there's orange stakes in the village now that you're more than welcome to look at when you get the RFPs back. We'd like to start with these four and then the town, the village will either say, yes, they work, that's great, put in the other four or they'll say, no, we made a big mistake, take them out. Um, I'm not, I've said this publicly before, I'm not for or against the speed humps. I'm for listening to the people that live in the village. If I had 20 people come to me that lived on a particular road in town, say Babcock, and they said they wanted something on Babcock and they, and these are the people that live on Babcock, I would listen to what they had to say and bring it back to the board of selectmen. So that's how yeah, I just wanted to know what we, my question was more was, we know they were approved um, and we're just where they stood. That's all. So where they stand now, they're on in the RFP. Yeah, with RFP. Yep. And when that comes back June 30th, they have to do back by June 30th. Once they come back, um, I'll, we're going to move ahead and put those four in. Again, we discussed this at the Board of Selectmen meeting last night. It was, there's been no push by this administration to overturn the decision by the previous administration to eliminate them. Yep, no problem. Just know they're being by another month or two. So I, I think our question was before is what's determining this, the speed humps actually going in? Was there a traffic study that was done that shows that there's actually a speeding problem, you know, down in the village? Um, or was it just the, you know, the naked eye of just the residents down there that are saying that there's a speeding problem? Um, so there was not a study done, although we we're conducting a study now because those speed signs I put up in the village uh, do record. They don't have a camera, they don't record who did it, but we know how many cars go through that village at what speed at what time. So we can look at that and say, you know, at nine o'clock in the morning on, on Tuesdays, we get the highest number of cars that speed through the village. I mean, that's that's information we have at our fingertips because those signs report back to the state. So we are developing that now, but most of it was through the naked, naked, naked eye. I was invited to sit on someone's porch in the village on a Sunday at one o'clock for an hour and a half to determine what I thought. I thought I'd see three or four cars. I saw over four, about 45 cars that day in that hour and a half, of which the majority were either speeding and or went through a stop sign. I was so, so surprised that I, that it even happened. And it was on a Sunday afternoon. So, uh, and now if you come into town hall and see where I sit with my, the window be, is right behind me and I, the main street's right behind that. Um, I can tell you in the morning, it's, um, there's a lot of activity and there's not everyone's going the speed limit. So um, I think it's mostly was um, by eye, it wasn't a study, uh, but the big thing was there was a survey done in the village by the people who live in the village. And overwhelmingly, they, they we talked about speed reduction. There was a few people that wanted to drop the speed limit to 15 miles an hour, but overwhelmingly, I'd say about 80 to 85% wanted to do something with either speed bumps or humps. And we felt that a speed hump would be a better solution than bumps. You have bumps on building, but these humps are, um, they're like speed tables almost. They have a flat spot with a small incline on both sides. So, and they're made to go over at about 30 miles an hour. Um, and we have signage, we'll be putting signage in with the humps. So if you, if you want to take a look at what they look like, we base them on a Maryland DOT standard that actually I found uh, while I was um, investigating speed bumps, speed bumps, et cetera. 
it is on the RFP for the for the bidders to look at to see what they're going to be like. They write they rise up to three inches, uh, basically, and then travel about uh, the 12 feet long. And in between the 12 feet, they rise to three at the peak, and then they start uh, level off, and then they drop off to the other side. So it doesn't have a adverse effect on lower uh, vehicles or vehicles towing trailers or something like that is what they're supposed to be. The reason we went back out to RFP on these is because the price of oil and the price of labor, et cetera, has gone up exorbitantly more than what the prices were before. We had to put it back out to RFP for the companies to rebid it. Thanks for that. I have nothing else. Anybody else have anything else? If not, we're motion to adjourn. Oh, public comment. Is there any public yeah. comment? Oh, public comment. Sorry, any public comments? Anybody on the screen? There's nobody else. Okay, I don't need to see anyone. Okay. Motion for adjournment. Uh, just before we adjourn, Steve, I would like to have yep. the traffic commission to meet quarterly. Uh, it's been a okay. year since you met. Uh, if yep. Just for if no other reason, just to, to talk about what maybe we look if speed humps are in by then, we can talk about how they're working, what you yep. think. Um, okay. If you get a chance to look at those orange stakes that are there now, you can get, give me feedback on that. But I think it's important to, um, we meet quarterly. You can, if there's something you see in town that you want to come to a board cycle meeting or send me an email that we can bring up at a future board cycle meeting, I'd be more than happy to. Okay, sounds good. We sent the other stuff prior to the selectmen as well and never received anything back. Okay, so you, you sent me something. We talked about that, so. <laughs> when you send me something, I'll make sure we, you, we get yep, back. No problem. All right, thank you. Thank you. Motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Any second? I'll second. Okay, any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. You too. Thank Bye. you.